final polishing of the violin, I'm going to need some strong alcohol. So we've come up to Healdsburg to visit Young and Yonder. Hi, Josh. Hey, how's I'm it going, man? Andy. Hey, Andy, I'm Josh. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Josh Opatz. I'm one of the owners here at Young and Yonder Spirits in Hillsburg, California. We're about an hour north of San Francisco up here in wine country. We are a craft distillery that makes vodka, gin, bourbon, absinthe, and amaro. And today we're in our little production area. So we're going to talk briefly about how we make uh, distilled spirits and um, how they transform to the different products that we sell. So behind me, we have our, our workhorse. This is our um, 600 gallon hybrid uh, pot still. So you'll notice it's got a short copper column on top of a large kettle. Um, we use this primarily as our whiskey production still. So basically we're buying grains from California farms and then we're sourcing them in-house here, um, cooking them, fermenting them and then distilling in this vessel here. And when we're distilling, what we're doing is we're taking that, uh, that fermented material. So in our industry, it's mash or wort, um, depending on if there's grains present or not. And after it's done fermenting, we basically pump it into this still and we use heat, uh, heat as a way to separate the alcohol from the other materials. So the um, alcohol boils at a, lo a lower temperature than the water does. It allows us to separate the alcohol from the water and therefore concentrating the alcohol. Um, so we'll do that and then, you know, based on that, then we go into different processes. So over on my right here, we have a, a still that's designed for making high proof neutral alcohol. So this is our vodka still. So when we're making vodka, we're basically taking our, our, our raw distillate. We're pumping it into the, this medium sized still. And as it's traveling through the still as a steam vapor, it's traveling through this tall column and it's basically stripping itself of any water content. So to purify it basically into a pure ethyl alcohol. Um, and then over on this side here, we have our smaller uh, botanical still. So when we're making gin and absinthe primarily, we're using this still to add the, the flavoring to the alcohol, the natural flavors that we use, like the juniper, the lemon peel, the hibiscus, the lemongrass, the anise, all that stuff, all gets basically added at, at the small, small batch level that we do here. So um, our business is we, we sell our spirits to um, the public through our tasting room here, where we have a kind of a little cocktail room and tasting experience. And then we also sell to restaurants and hotels and stores and so forth uh, as well. So we can find a product there. Is this locally made? I, I doubt it. It's not, yeah. So it's fabricated abroad and then it's finished in the United States. They're all put together in the, basically the Southeast, in the Southern part of the United States. Okay, so that's where most distilling Business. There's more. Yeah, there's a lot of. Yeah, there's a lot of history, tradition, and industry uh -huh. over over in the south. So, what's it like trying to bring a, a spirit business into wine country? Uh, it has a unique set of opportunities and challenges. There are several distilleries in the area, so like the penetration of of suppliers like us uh -huh. in the marketplace are growing. We have a really strong um, sense of beverage tourism in this area. Area. Uh -huh. So being a wine region, we get tourists from all over the globe and all over the state coming to visit. You know, and then the counterpoint to that is like there's a lot of like the real estate is expensive uh -huh. because it's so tourist driven. Um, the cost of doing business is, is significantly higher than if I was in a, like a low cost state. And you know, I'm from Hillsburg. I grew up here. I went to high school here. Oh, okay. And so you know, this is this is a way for me to kind of return to. Uh -huh return to the area and do something that's sort of um, along the lines of like the family, what the family has done for, you know, for a while, right. which is when we want wine. So we're, we're deviating for sure by going into spirits. It made more sense from us from a like passion and interest perspective. Right. Why, why does anyone come to Young and Yonder for their bottle of food? Yeah. I mean, what distinguishes you and, and what goes into that? People, first and foremost, they, they appreciate the sense of small business and like uh -huh. being a local producer in, you know, in a big industry because there's a lot of corporate producers in the world that, you know, just do things um, 
without a lot of passion. They're just basically, it's all just process and numbers. Right. Each product has its unique own value proposition. So like when we talk about vodka, people think of them as all being the same, like kind of, kind of a commoditized product. But the way that you distill it, the way that you filter it after the fact, the way that you treat the, the water that's involved, it all impact the quality of the final spirit. And so like something that we pay attention to uh, every detail um, in that process. The whiskey is made from, you know, from all local grains and, you know, it's aged in the house and that's something that's, that's not common. You know, in the beginning it was, um, let's just, just throw ideas at the wall, distill them and see what happens. Uh -huh. And I think now we're at the point where in terms of like product development maturity, where it's like we sit down and we, we conceptualize it on paper. Like, what is this going to be? What is it going to taste like? Uh -huh. How is it going to finish? What's it going to smell like? And then we build the recipe to tailor towards like what our vision is. Well, first of all, are you still open with the, with the pandemic going on? Yeah, we've been closed for, for indoor for almost a year now. We've been able to open off and on throughout this process um, when we're not in shelter in place uh -huh. for outdoor only. Uh -huh. um, we are not designed to have an outdoor space. So like our outdoor patio is tables and chairs in a parking lot, but it's, it's, it's getting, it's allowing us to at least like not completely lose all the muscle memory of having right. the, the taste. So you're memory. relying on, on the word of mouth or club. Also, okay. You know, have a young a young son uh -huh. um, and a family to think about. And this yeah. was never part of the business. <laughs> yeah, right. Being shut down for a year, right? I know. Uh, and leaving our jobs I'm, in the I'm, city. I mean, and... I'm impressed that you you managed to hold on this long because I know you. Uh, yeah, you yeah, it's crazy, man. You well, know what do you do? That's... What do you do? We make alcohol, so like we gotta have a little fun in life too. So if, like we left our high paying jobs in the city to do this, like. Uh -huh. At least we can have a little fun if we're going to be poor and, and you know and starving uh -huh. as a small business. So that's what we, that's kind of how we're trying to think about it. The truth is, is like when you get into it, you it never turns off. I don't know that I expected it to be that way. You know, I, uh -huh. I, you know it's kind of, kind of one of those things where you thought like, oh, you know, if we want to take a day off and go to the beach, we could do that. And if we want to take Max on like a bike ride, you know, I wake up every morning. It's like, how fast can I get here? Right, how many right. hours can I fit into the day? Right. How right. can we? You know, how are we gonna you know continue to move forward? Sure. A business and then you have to sell it like you, like right. that's the other thing too it doesn't sell itself like alcohol does not sell itself you know you have to be hustling right. so all really good life lessons and um, yeah all important for like the, the real side of owning a business uh -huh. so now let's get down to the most important thing can you give us a quick overview of, of what you have and, and especially what, what your most popular items are sure uh, most popular of the entire um, company is our Hobbs gin so that's a hundred proof eight botanical gin that's a cross between like a London dry and a, and, a, and a new Western or contemporary gin. So juniper foundation, but then citrus and floral are the dominating secondary um, attributes to it. And then we have our, um, our kind of our flagship whiskey. This is the whiskey that we make um, on a kind of a full-time basis, uh, which is our bourbon. So bourbon's a type of American whiskey that's made with corn, and other grains, um, and in our case, it's rye, wheat, and bourbon. So it's a high rye style bourbon. So it's got some some of that like spicy floral um, secondary notes to it on top of the corn. So, Andy, may I present to you? This is two liters of high proof, 190 proof. Wow. Alcohol. This was made yeah. during our last vodka run. Uh -huh. So that tall tower that we talked about, where right. we basically purify alcohol to be about as pure as we can make it in this facility. Um, we took the first part of that collection and separated it out for your project. So this is the, the most volatile stuff that comes It off. is. So what's in here? It's ethyl alcohol. It's a little bit of acetone, a little bit of uh, methanol. It's going to be slightly dissolving the varnish and it's yes. kind of spreading it out. Yep. And I normally buy it, I buy five gallons from a chemical supply company. Yeah. It's a pure, pure ethanol. And, and so, so when you're open, do you have the events here? We do, yeah, we do. So we do um, socials, which are open to the public, and then we also rent it out for private events as well. Uh -huh. 
So how would you, what do you think about the idea of having a Redwood violin come and play a concert here? Oh, that's a, that's a fantastic idea. I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, assuming we can all get vaccinated and we can have a big party. I mean, when everything's open again, that would be awesome. <laughs> of course, yeah, yeah consider it done. So Josh, I gotta thank you so much. I've really learned a lot and um, thanks so much for being part of the Redwood violin. Yeah, and thank you so much for, for having us, Andy, be a part of the project. So. That's great. I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know how it happens. And I gotta encourage everyone to come down and visit the Amaro is delicious. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. You guys are always welcome to come visit us here at Young and Yonder Spirits in Hillsburg. Check our website out. And uh, if you have any questions, you could also email us as well. So thank you so much for your time.